Stay tuned for my story coming up next. Growing up in Buffalo was um, pretty tough. I mean, um, didn't get out a lot because of um, the upbringing of my mom. Um, she worked days and nights, and it left me and my sisters and brothers at home. And so we didn't get to see a lot of things or go a lot of places. Um, we were instructed to stay home and on the porch, as far as we can go, was in, in the backyard or to the front porch. Um, so it was a kind of shelter type lifestyle, but it was for the good. I was, uh, I was an athlete. I was a four-letter softball player. I um, attempted to play volleyball. Um, I got into basketball very late and um, earned a, a, a partial scholarship to Hilbert Junior College. And after my first year there, I forfeited and moved on to Brockport State. And I played three years at Brockport State um, as a point guard. Division three. Well, f first it was tough um, being away from home um, and having to be the one to to make make yourself get up in the morning and not having to rely on anybody. So it was basically where I learned my independency. Um, so the first year was pretty tough being away from home. You know, I didn't go to class. I skipped class. My port card came home, and you know, my mom got it, and she's like, "What are you doing there?" You know, and. Um, I was just lonely, like any other college student would be when you're not used to being away from home. Um, so I uh, end up meeting this um, young lady by the name of Crystal, and um, she introduced me to this leadership development program for minority students at Brockport. And you know, I started going there, and it helped me with my academics, um, public speaking. We did all kinds of things. We went to um, some of the local Rochester schools to be mentors to the, you know, children at um, Frederick Douglass Middle School and um, Franklin High School. So, I mean, it, it really boosted up my academics. I became uh, a, a dean student um, and, and graduated with a uh, three and a half point GPA. Yeah, actually after graduation, the day after graduation, I end up um, starting <laughs> my career in the, uh, work, in the working world, the corporate world. Um, I went to um, be a, a teacher at this um, daycare facility and just after nine, Nine months, I moved on to Eastman Kodak, and I spent um, almost 10 and a half, 11 years there, and then in 1998, I got downsized um, and moved back home. Uh, my job was events arranging and doing administrative things at Eastman Kodak, and what basically my job responsibility entailed was the new hires or the new, the, the field engineers at Eastman Kodak would come in from all over the states and um, come to train on new Kodak equipment. And they would spend at least eight to 10 weeks there. And, and some of them were from strange places, didn't know anybody. And um, certain ones I would take out and show them a little bit about Rochester, take them to Niagara Falls, and we'll hang out, get to know them and stuff. And one particular woman from Baltimore, we took her out and um, one day she happened to be in a restaurant reading a newspaper and saw the New York State Natural Physique Championship. This was back in 1992. So she calls me on the telephone and she says, you ought to think about doing this show. And I'm like, I don't, I don't work out, I don't compete or anything. And she said, well, you really ought to think about doing it. Let's go check it out. So I hung up on her and she called me back and said, we really need to go and see this. And I hung up back on and next thing I know, she's standing at my workplace saying, we're going to check this place out. So we drove like 45 minutes from Rochester to Fairport and met the guy and he, he took me into a posing room and he was like, yeah, we can work with you, we can, we can do a whole lot. I had like six weeks before his actual competition and he said, you come here, you show up, I'll put you on a nice diet, I'll show you how to train and exercise, we'll put together a posing routine and, and um, you know, um, you can train at my facility for nothing just show up every day and that's what I did and I was thinking this was just going to be a one-time thing get through the six weeks and that was going to be it for me and um, I did it and I was only 110 pounds at that time 
And um, I like the end results. I entered this competition not knowing anything, went on stage having fun. The only thing I could think about was the fact that I was going to be able to eat again. <laughs> and um, so I, I really had fun on the stage. And um, after the show, I went and got me a nice large pizza and, and sat and ate the whole thing. <laughs> But I took an impressive um, third out of out of the six women that I lined up with, and I was that was that's the most charitable charitable trophy that I have that sits on my um, table at home. It's very it's very extreme when when you get into the competitive portion of it. Um, throughout the year, um, I always moderate my meals. I you know sometimes once in a while I may eat something that I may have a craving for, but most of um, my months. 10 to 10 and a half, 11 months out of the year, I'm strictly on a diet. Um, but when I was preparing for shows, it was to the extreme where you took out a lot of things, especially going into the, the competition portion of the uh, training where you would have to carb deplete, you lose your mind, you don't know where you're coming or going, you lose all your friends because you become this obnoxious kind of person, you know. I, I mean, and it's not intended it's just that this is what dieting when you sacrifice it does to anybody uh, my typical meals are like regular flavor oatmeal with just plain water I throw a, um, a thing of Splenda in it and try to drink it down because I'm not an oatmeal person um, my dad like fed us oatmeal every day when we were younger and I think that's the reason why I hate oatmeal but and I'm not an egg eater, so I um, I drink this stuff called Designer Protein, which is a whey um, that substitute my eggs. Um, I eat have maybe half a toast, some fat-free turkey bacon for breakfast, um, and then I'll have a shake two or three hours later. Then I have a meal which consists of um, some baked chicken. It could be some baked fish, some ground beef with some uh, a yam or a plain potato some brown rice or um, some green vegetables. Any green vegetables such as string beans, um, um, broccoli, asparagus, um, spinach, you know, and some salads. I'm in the gym every day. I love this place. <laughs> I love the place. The gym is like my second home. Um, but um, as far as my um, training regimen, it's I do um, one hour sessions. Um, the training usually lasts about maybe 25 to 30 minute sessions with 30 seconds rest in between um, and I try to train to failure um, and I used to hit one one different body part per day out of the five days and, and then the weekends usually consist of my cardio and getting my tie-in stuff like more hit more of my abs my calves my forearms and things like that yeah, I'm 100% I'm natural, and, and that is what I promote, that's what I emphasize. Uh, even with my Mo Muscles athletic wear, it's Mo Muscles athletic wear, and on the back you get naturally built. Um, I never believed in, you know, going no other way other than being natural, and I figure, you know, and I've always said to myself if I had to, you know, utilize some chemical antibiotic, I would remove myself from the sport. You know, you want to be fair, and, and, and I, I wanted to compete fair, and that's, that's, I've always competed natural shows that did the polygraphed and the urinalysis testing.